Welcome to this episode of the Deep Dive Podcast. AI good or evil? Well, today we're doing a deep dive into, well, tech regulation. And you might be surprised how often we see uh, the same patterns pop up again and again. Right. So we've got some excerpts here from a document called, Get This, Moments in History Where Technology Frameworks or Regulations Were Created Based on Perceived Issues That Later Proved to Be Exaggerated or Misaligned with the Actual Development of Technology. Catchy. Right. Yeah. Bit of a mouthful. It is yeah. a bit of a mouthful. Well, the title's a mouthful, but it really gets at something, you know, really interesting. Because we often approach new technologies with this sense of, like, fear. Right. Right? Overestimating the risks. Yeah. We don't fully grasp the potential benefits. Yeah. And we think, oh, this is something new. But this isn't just ancient history. This is happening right now with things like AI. Yeah. And, and it's interesting you say fear. Because I think that is a very natural human reaction right. to something new and something we don't understand. It's just the unknown. Huh? The unknown. Okay, so let's start with an example. And this one is, uh, I might seem a little funny now. Imagine it's 1865. Okay. You've just bought yourself, I don't know, a shiny new automobile. Okay. One problem, though. In the UK, there was something called the red flag law. The red flag law. Which meant, get this, someone had to walk in front of your car with a red flag. What? <laughs> yeah, you heard that right. Someone had to walk That's in important. in front of your car. With a flag. With a red flag. Like, like a literal flag. A literal red flag. Now, yeah. our source points out that this law came from this place of fear. These newfangled cars, horseless carriages, they're too dangerous. Yeah. And it turns out, not so much. But it does beg the question, what if we still had that law today? Oh my gosh. Imagine the regulations we'd have on things like self-driving cars if we were still that cautious. Right. Right. This example just shows you how overblown fears can stifle innovation. And what's really interesting to think about, and I don't know if this is in the document or not, but it's just something to consider, is who might have actually benefited from slowing down the adoption of the automobile, right? Yeah. Because if you think about it, back then, it was probably those with a stake in the existing transportation system. The horse and buggy. Yeah, like the horse-drawn carriage industry, they right. might have had a vested interest in, like, hey, let's slow this whole car thing down. Let's put the brakes a little bit. Right. So it's not always just about safety. Right. Sometimes there are other factors at play. It reminds me of that phrase, follow the money. Yeah, sometimes. Find benefits. Okay. So moving on from horse-drawn carriages to the digital age, because, you know, this document also talks about the early days of the telegraph and the telephone. Oh, yeah. Now, this is where I think we see some really interesting parallels to our own time. Absolutely, yeah. Because back then, people were worried about these new communication devices being used for, well, you know, eavesdropping, mm. spreading misinformation. Does any of this sound familiar? Right, exactly. It's like we're hardwired for this. But yeah, I mean, back then, they were worried about eavesdropping, spreading misinformation, all these things that, you know, are still concerns today. Mm -hmm. And while those concerns weren't completely off base, they often led to regulations that, looking back, you know, actually hindered the progress of these communication tools. Mm -hmm. you know, it's a tough balance to strike. You want to acknowledge potential downsides without completely you know, squashing something that has huge potential benefits. It's like walking a tightrope, right? You're trying to find that balance. Yeah, exactly. Speaking of tightropes, let's jump to the early days of computers, the internet. Okay. Remember dial-up? Oh, yeah. Those were the days. Those big, bulky monitors. You know, our source specifically calls out the U.S. Computer Fraud and Abuse Act of 1986, and they argue that while, yes, it had good intentions, it ended up being too vague. And it actually limited what we could do with computers. And that's a really crucial point to consider, right? Because the Internet at that time was this vast, unknown territory. And policymakers were trying to figure out how do we regulate something we don't even fully understand. Right. And this lack of understanding often led to, you know, this reliance on worst case scenarios rather than a nuanced understanding of how people would actually use this new technology. They were so busy worrying about what could happen, they didn't even think about the possibilities exactly. of what could be. Exactly. And, you know, it's important to remember that this act wasn't just some abstract piece of legislation. You know, it's broad language. It had real-world consequences. For example, and this is just one, there were cases where people got in trouble for simply using a website in a way that, you know, its creators didn't intend. Wow. Yeah, like you could you could get in legal hot water for, I don't know, creating a parody account on a social media site if the platform's rules forbid it, even if it seems harmless. 
Wow. That's wild. So, so far we've gone from automobiles to telephones to the internet. Are we starting to see a pattern here? Yeah, it seems like we, as a society, we have this tendency to kind of hit the panic button when we're faced with something new, something potentially game-changing. Right. But that reaction, while understandable, can sometimes do more harm than good. So we've been tracing this pattern, right? Right. Of fear-driven tech regulation. We started with the uh, early days of automobiles <laughs> all the way to the Internet. But we're not done yet, are we? Not even close. The further we dig into these historical parallels, yeah. the more this pattern really emerges. Yeah. You know, it's fascinating, almost as if each new wave of technology, you know, there's this collective, wait a minute, is this safe? Right. It's that human instinct again, yeah. that fear of the unknown. Well, our next stop takes us to the 1920s. Okay. With the advent of, well, radio broadcasting. Now, this one might surprise you. Back then, people, they were seriously worried about mass propaganda. Propaganda. Threats to national security. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know. Think about it. You have this this brand new medium. It can reach millions of people simultaneously. Oh, yeah. At once. At once. So, I mean, governments, they had, they had every reason to be concerned. Like, how could this be used? Right. For good or for evil. Exactly. And what's really interesting is that, you know, a lot of the regulations that they put into place, I mean, they seemed really important at the time, but... As radio broadcasting evolved, they became less and less relevant. Mm. So they were almost ahead of their time in a way. It's like they were so focused on, you know, this possibility of like a radio fueled revolution or something yeah. that they didn't fully grasp it, its potential to, you know, to entertain, to inform, to connect with people in very, very different ways. Yeah. It's easy to get caught up in the fear of the unknown. It is. And speaking of, you know, powerful forces that can be used for good or for evil, our source, yeah. they bring up another fascinating example, and that's nuclear energy. Oh, yeah. So in the aftermath of World War II, I mean, obviously the focus on preventing the spread of nuclear weapons, that was paramount. Of course. But this laser focus on, you know, security and preventing proliferation, sometimes it came at the expense of exploring the peaceful applications of nuclear energy. Oh, interesting. So instead of, like, harnessing the power of the atom to, you know, provide clean energy or things like that, right. it was more about containment. Containment. Control. Yeah. Make sure it doesn't fall into the wrong hands, which, again, you understand. Right. But... You know, our source argues that this overly cautious approach, in some cases, it's stifled innovation. So we missed out on some potential benefits there. Potentially. We're not saying it's, you know, the be all and end all, but right. something to consider. OK, so let's let's take a step back for a second okay. and think about what we've what we've learned here. So we've seen how, you know, this fear of the unknown, right? Right. Whether it's automobiles, telephones, the Internet, even radio, it's shaped the way that we as a society regulate technology. Yeah. Throughout history. And you might be thinking, OK, so this is an interesting history lesson, but mm. what does this have to do with me, like, right now in my life? Well, I was just thinking that. Right. It's a fair question. But here's the thing. OK. This historical pattern, it has huge implications for how we're approaching what is arguably the most transformative technology of our time. And that is? Artificial intelligence. AI. Yeah. It's really, it's pretty fascinating when you think about it, right? It, it, yeah. Throughout history, every time some new, potentially you know, disruptive technology comes along, we see this pattern. Yeah. We talked about the fear around automobiles, mm -hmm. telephones, radio. It seems like... We as humans, we're almost hardwired to hit the panic button when, we, when we're faced with the unknown. Right, because we don't know we don't know how to react, yeah. right? So we go to that fear. And that's exactly what's happening right now with AI. Yeah. I mean, this is a technology with the potential to reshape, I mean, so many aspects of our world, yeah. from how we diagnose diseases to, like, how we get to work in the morning. Right. But it also comes with its own set of anxieties, uh, right? Of like, course, yeah. And, and what-if scenarios. And, you know, our source actually makes a pretty bold statement about this. They argue that a lot of the people who are who are writing the rules for AI today, right, oh. like the frameworks for how we develop and use it are academics uh. who, and this is key, don't have a lot of practical real world experience with the technology. Hmm. And according to our source, these frameworks are often based more on fear than facts. That's a that's a pretty serious claim, but it does. I mean, it does align with what we've seen right throughout history. Right. I mean, when when something new emerges, when something that we don't fully grasp or understand emerges, it's really easy to get caught up in those worst case scenarios. 
Think about like the early days of the internet. You know, policymakers were like scrambling. How do we regulate this thing? We don't even really understand it. So they focused on these hypothetical risks rather than, you know, the way people were actually using it. It's like we're seeing a repeat of that. But this time, the stakes are even higher. Yeah. Because with AI, I mean, we're not just talking about what you can or can't do on a website. Right. We're talking about technologies that could impact, I mean, everything, our jobs. Healthcare. Our healthcare. And that's why, I mean, that's why this conversation is so crucial, because we, we need to find that balance, right, sure. between mitigating, yes, the legitimate risks, mm -hmm. but also allowing for innovation to flourish. Of course. Because if we let fear completely dictate this conversation, yeah. we risk missing out on, I mean, tremendous potential benefits. Absolutely. So how do we strike that balance? Well, our source points to the importance of collaboration. Collaboration. They argue that we need, you know, industry leaders, okay, policymakers, and yes, even academics working together, not against each other. Working together, yeah. We need a diversity of voices and perspectives at the table to make sure that this is done responsibly. I mean, think about it. AI has the potential to address some of the biggest challenges facing humanity. Right. Global health crises. We yeah. need this. But it can only happen if we're all working together, if we're having open dialogues, ethical considerations, and informed decision making. So so where does this leave us? What what are some key takeaways that you hope, you know, our listener they're they're walking away with after this deep dive on, you know, tech regulation? Well, I think the biggest takeaway is that history has shown us time and time again that, you know, these knee-jerk reactions and these fear-based regulations, they can really stifle progress. Yeah. So we need to be cautious, but we also need to be optimistic and we need to, you know, keep our eyes on the prize. It's about asking those tough questions. It's about considering all the different viewpoints. Absolutely. And, and, and really being wary of narratives that are driven solely by fear. Right. Because the future of AI and, frankly, our future depends on it. And that wraps up our deep dive into the, well, fascinating and oftentimes surprisingly cyclical world of tech regulation. It's true. Remember, knowledge is power, right? Of course, yeah. The more informed we are as individuals, as a society, the better equipped we'll be to navigate, you know, the incredible opportunities and, yes, the potential challenges of, of this new era, of this new technological advancement. So until next time, thanks for joining us. Stay tuned for more Deep Dive podcasts. The Deep Dive podcast is an educational podcast focusing on technology and AI. Produced by Kathy Brown. Virtualteacher.com.au Thank you.